Hello, my name's Jane and I'm the Cornish Knitter. This is my channel where I talk about all my knitting, my sort of yarn shop, which I own, which is Stitches and Cream in Falmouth in Cornwall in the UK. And I talk about all sorts of things, fibre, what's going on in my life, and then a little bit, if I can, about my trips out and about in Cornwall, because it's such a beautiful county. I wanted to share that experience with you. So welcome if you're new, and if you've been here before, welcome back and thank you for watching. It's been a little while since I spoke to you just on my own. The last video I put up was one where I was talking with Nikki of Comfort Road Knits, who's a pattern designer who does a lot of patterns for our knit alongs and also Fran, who a number of you have seen before on our knit alongs. Um, we just wanted to talk about the sort of patterns that were inspiring us, what designs we were thinking about, what we liked about them and what we didn't, and uh, just just talk about um, the designers behind it as well, if, if we wanted to talk about those. Uh, our original plan <laughs> was to stick to a sort of small group of patterns, um, but as always, when we got chatting, we went a little bit off track and, you know, one person would suggest the pattern and then another one of us would say oh yeah I really like that and have you seen this one and so whilst it was a lovely chat and a lot of you enjoyed the chat I know a lot of you were frustrated because I didn't put all the pictures up um every time we were speaking about them and I put them at the end and apologies for that um anybody that's tried to edit one of these videos will know how long editing takes and as we were, you might have noticed it on my face as we were talking in the video, as we were doing it, I was being like, oh goodness me, this is going to be a nightmare to edit. As it was, it took me ages to get the names in and everything. Um, but we will be doing them again, but what we will probably do is stick to our sort of regime and we'll potentially have them up on an iPad as well to be able to show you what we're talking about at the same time. Um, so apologies if you did find that frustrating. I totally get why why that was. And thank you for all your feedback and comments. Um, yeah, it, it, I knew they were going to come as soon as I put it up. So I just thought, well, I'm going to put it up anyway and see if people just like the format. Um, and if they like the format, I can add in the pictures. The other thing probably as well with, I edit on iMovie, which is the Apple sort of editing platform. And on my version of it, I can't get like the mini pictures in. I'm going to re-look at what I edit these videos with. And if I can find something else quickly and get this up today, I might might be able to do it. If not, I'll do it before I do the next video. Um, because it's nice, I know, to have them in a small bit. But in iMovie, you have to come completely off screen and then you see the whole screen is covered with the picture, which is OK. But I felt it because we'd named so many, I felt we'd bounce around a little bit uh, and that might frustrate people too. So lesson learned. Thank you for your feedback. Next time we still have all the chat but we'll do it slightly differently. We're planning to do sort of every six weeks just a pattern review about what's new, what's caught our eye um, and, and why really. Uh, is it the construction? Is it a new designer? Is it just the look of it? Is it something that we need in our wardrobe? And hopefully you'll just enjoy that chat. But yeah, do it differently next time. <laughs> so hopefully that's covered that one off. Um, so what am I? What have I been up to? So um, since I last spoke to you, quite a bit's happened in terms of we had one of our retreats as well. So um, anybody that doesn't know, we run knitting retreats down here in Cornwall in Falmouth, uh, just aimed at bringing people together um, who have a shared love of fibre, it can be knitting, it can be crochet, some of them are embroiderers as well, um, and just bringing people together in a really beautiful place, lovely accommodation, in a really relaxed environment where they can just sit, work on their own projects, chat, make new friends, but also get some help and inspiration. So the last one, Nikki and Fran, really kindly came every day and helped out um, and sort of gave people advice and sort of taught people new tricks and tips and 
sort of different hacks with their knitting. And then uh, I, I'm, I'm the maid, basically. So I do sort of sort out, well, we do have um, somebody that helps with the cooking, but then I do all the prep and all the sort of teas and coffees and, and making sure everybody's happy and got everything that they need, as well as obviously sit down and chat and knit and just chew the cud about anything and everything. And, and we went for lots of walks, although the weather wasn't fabulous because we're right on the sea you know the, the property's right beside the beach you're able to walk and sort of get out no matter what the weather so people really enjoyed that and and I think the biggest thing I get from the retreats is seeing usually a group of complete strangers <laughs> come together at the beginning of this uh, the sort of retreat and by the end of it leaving as firm friends so each retreat group seems to get their own whatsapp group um, so they're quite buzzy and we get to see what people have been working on since they've left and how they've used those new skills that they've learned whilst they've been on the retreat. So yeah, this last one was lovely. They were a lovely group of ladies, really got on well, um, all looking to come back again next year, which is always a, a great endorsement of them. So if you are interested ever in a retreat, we do run retreats. Um, we have got a page on our website with uh, about the retreats. We've just advertised all of our 2024 retreats. We've got, I think, two or three rooms left at different times during the year. So if you are interested, go on to our website, have a look. Or if you're interested in being on our um, distribution list for next year's retreats as an early bird warning, do go onto the website and register your interest and then we'll keep you on a database and let you know when 2025 and 2026 retreat dates are because we've got a new venue as well for a longer retreat, which we'll do probably once, maybe once, maybe twice a year. We'll see how it goes. But that's really down, right down on the beach. Um, we're doing that in the end of May, beginning of June, and it's a week long, and you're gonna be working on a specific project, but it's in a huge great manor house on a National Trust estate, and you've got a, a beach that you can walk on, and we're hoping that the weather will be quite nice early June, uh, that people can actually, you know, sit outside and knit and, and enjoy the natural environment where it is. So yeah, the retreat the retreat was a big thing. You know, it's it's hard work, but for me, but it's great for everybody else, and I really love it. It's it's such an amazing thing. And my sister came in and helped too. So yeah, I, I was just really grateful for everybody chipping in and helping because it makes the time run really smoothly and people get a great experience. So the retreat happened. Uh, been doing quite a bit of work planning because we've got a. Um, a new knit along coming up. Um, so the knit along again, Nikki, the Comfort Road Knits designer is designing us a sock to do over Easter. So it's a specific Easter sock. It hasn't got a name yet. Um, she's just knitted up the sample. We have ordered in some kits and I will put up a picture of the kits um, now so that you can see what they are. They're up they're up for pre-order and they won't be dispatched until the 18th of March at the earliest but you will get them in time for Easter um, and the idea is that we'll we'll do an online knit along starting probably on the Thursday before Easter and it will be a short little knit along but we thought it would be a nice a nice thing to do for those people that are um, maybe don't meet up with people or you know have, have a long weekend and, and just want a little project that they can do with friends as well and as usual we'll have Ravelry group you know a Ravelry group we haven't decided whether we'll do it on um, as a YouTube live or as a zoom uh, do do comment below what which you'd prefer because if it's a zoom um, event then I'll just create the event and publish the publish the zoom um, link so that people can join along so just let me know what you prefer in the comments below but yeah so that that knit along is coming and we're also planning a summer one which nikki's designing a beautiful seaside themed shawl um with some lace work in it as well so so really looking forward to that yes yeah, so lots of plans about knit alongs coming up and what else have we got oh it's mothering sunday or mother's day here in the uk this Sunday so yeah again prepping for that and um, my children are both live away unfortunately so I won't get to see them so my, my daughter's in Edinburgh and my son's in London so uh, 
we, we've got like a Zoom or FaceTime call planned for first thing Sunday morning so that I can catch up with them. But apart from that, I'm going to try and spend the day doing what I want to do. So we're going out for a walk somewhere in Cornwall, although the forecast isn't great. Um, and doing some knitting, you know, chilling out, doing some knitting. Uh, my sister and I, Sandra and I, are going to take mum and dad out tomorrow. That's Saturday. Don't know when this is going up, so the days might all be confused. But we're going to take them out on Saturday and um, we're going to take them down probably to Port Leven. I mean, dad's 94 this year, mum's 91. So although mum's really sprightly and sort of able to do anything really you know she's amazing um dad's mobility is not so great so we thought if we go down to port Leven, we can park it's nice and flat down there and anybody that's been there the scenery is really great and i will try and record a little video while i'm down there so i can add it to a future future one of these vlogs because i think the weather's meant to be pretty stormy today i did a little video as i was coming in and my goodness the wind again <laughs> i always seem to be talking in the wind um and yeah, the sea's really choppy. I, it feels like storm force winds out there. So yeah, my hair's sort of a bit scrunched up, but I can I didn't have a comb with me. So if I turn to the side, you see it's see it's all over the place. Never mind, never mind. Who cares? I certainly don't. So shall I get on to some knitting content now? <laughs> what am I wearing? Uh, just chatting about everything else. Um, so I've got on the, I think it's called the Tamdu shawl, and I will put the name here. Um, it's by Melanie Berg. Shall I take it off? You see, it's quite a long shawl. It's one of those sort of long and shallow shawls, and you knit it um, where you increase two stitches one end and decrease the other. So you sort of knit it, sort of doing that. And it is, let me get it the right side. So you start off with um, just simple garter stitch stripes. And then there's a really simple lace pattern that's in the, in the design. Um, and you intersperse these stripes. And so you mix up the colors. So I used three 100 gram skeins of yarn um, from Lay Family Yarns. I got the yarn when I was up at Kelly and Nick's retreat, the Woolle retreat back in October last year. So I picked up these three colours together because I wear a lot of blue and I thought it was a nice combination. And I, as everybody in the shop will tell you, I love a green. Um, and this yarn in the middle is sort of like a, a slightly variegated yarn can't remember the name of it um i will put it in the in the comments um that i attach and then there's a bigger lace panel here which goodness it looks so much better after blocking <laughs> when you do these sorts of lace things you think oh what's that going to look like but once you block it it's nice and i and then it's got a lovely pico edge bind off which i really enjoyed doing um so yeah i, I really like the shawl it's yeah sorry noosh was at the door so i just let her in um, so yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it. I like the weight of it because it's a four ply sock weight yarn. And again, we have got kits of this coming in. Um, so we will have it up as a pre-order if people are interested. In terms of what I had left, I had quite a bit of yarn left from the pattern. Um, I followed the pattern exactly. So so I think I probably got nearly, I, I had, I think the one that I had least of was the navy navy coloured yarn but the others I probably had nearly 50 grams of yarn left so I think you could possibly squeeze another shawl of some kind out of it or a, certainly a pair of stripy socks um, using the yarns too so quite a good value value sort of pack because you, you can get two projects out of it so yeah I really enjoyed knitting that um, and and the other one I wanted to show you was one that Fran's done actually as a sample for the shop but um, again, done in um, Lay Family Yarns. And you can't appreciate possibly the full beauty of this shawl. But this is the Papillon shawl. I will put who the designer is in the notes underneath. It's such a lovely shawl. Um, I loved these colors. And again, we've got kits coming in for these so if you are interested keep an eye on our website and they will be up we hopefully will have the yarn in by the end of next week to actually make these we won't have many kits but this is such a fabulous 
fabulous shawl I'll put that one on too it's cold so <laughs> um, wearing another shawl won't won't hurt me because it will keep my neck warm so yes yeah, so that's that's a sample we've got for the shop but um, Kelly bless her for lay family yarns she was really helpful to me because I rung her in a bit of a panic last week about the yarn for the uh, knit along and um, just because what we'd originally planned just didn't work out in the way we wanted it to and yeah she and Nick were like yeah we can we can dye it up don't worry don't panic we'll get it to you in time and bless her and her and Nick have, have been amazing um, and do go and follow Kelly because she does a, a lovely little vlog on usually on a Friday evening where she just sits and knits and talks about her knitting she's a really gentle soul and it's a, a really lovely listen and I do just enjoy sitting and knitting with her on a Friday evening so yeah go and check out Lay Family Yarns and Kelly's uh, vlog because it's a, it's a lovely listen too so yeah I'm very grateful to them for, for what they've done so that's sort of finished objects it's knitting loads of socks as always but ones that I can't share um, what I'm currently working on is the Polina pullover and again if I can I'll pop a picture up so the Polina pullover by uh, Tetty Lutzak um, this is obviously colour work it's a top down sweater it's one of the ones that I mentioned in the video that I was um, that we did when we were talking about patterns, which was one of my ones I was really sort of keen to knit. The neckline, there are three different necklines that you can knit with this sweater. So that there is this sort of ruffle line. And if you see here, you sort of do this design and then you put, you sort of do some decreases and do, it reminds me of a, an Elizabethan ruffle, or if you are, the same sort of age as I am. You can remember that Lady Di used to wear sort of the ruffled blouses with the ruffle at the top and they were all the rage at one point. Uh, and it very much reminds me of that. And I was, I'm sort of old enough to have worn those the first time round. In fact, my nickname used to be Lady Di because um, some people just thought there was some similarities between us. I think it was just because my hair was blonde and um, cut in a very similar style. Um, so you knit it like that and then you go back into that design. You, there's some short rows here at the back of the neck. Um, so that sort of adds some depth to the neck. And then you go into knitting the yoke, which is this yoke. There are some really long floats inside. So I've been catching, catching them as I go because some of the stitches, if you look, oh, where shall I? So, you know, sort of some like this, you've got, quite a long one here and then you've sort of got long ones in the in the cream either side that that cream one in particular in the middle is quite a long float so um, I've been checking my tension all the time and trying to be meticulous about not not making it pucker um, so I've nearly got to the end of the first part of the yoke and then I think you do some more short rows to sort of create a little bit more length at the back and then you do sort of an interspersed dotty line and then some more um, uh, some more pattern before you go on to finish so I've really enjoyed doing it I don't kind of work is something that I I enjoy doing but a big project like this I do a bit of it and then I put it down and do something else because it does take a lot of concentration following charts looking at charts and sort of the little boxes sometimes I find makes my eyes go a bit a bit funny so um, I don't want to overload myself when I'm doing this, but I'm really looking forward to, to actually sort of seeing what this comes out like. I've knitted it, I should say that what I've knitted it in as well. So I've knitted it in um, Fibre Company Cumbria Fingering, which is there. Uh, this is Windermere, this colour, and this is Blencartha. Now we have the, um, the Cumbria worsted yarn but we're just getting in the fingering into the shop so this was my sample to try it try it out the fingering and see what it feels like it is beautiful i have to say the pattern itself is written for sports weight yarn but when i looked at the gauge and knowing this is quite a plump sort of plump uh four ply i thought this would work for it and it is and it's knitting perfectly to gauge and the fabric is really nice it's not sort of a thin fabric just because it's a lighter weight 
So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how that's gonna come out. The other thing I've been knitting on is um, I've been just designing some socks, some very basic socks for our, our intro to sock club. So some of you have heard of sock club before. We have a sock club, which is a subscription service, which um, every two months people get a sock box with an exclusive yarn in it, um, a special yarn and an exclusive pattern designed by us with a stitch marker that's made in-house here by Nick, our lovely Nick in the shop. And we also include a lovely Cornish gift um, from a, a Cornish creative, a small business that's based here in Cornwall um, as well, and some hand-drawn hand -drawn illustrations. Alongside of that, people get online tutorials, which I create, um, and also we have social events every two weeks. So we have sort of a knit and natter as part of it. If you're interested, again, just check out the website. But I did need to, to we're just about to open, subscriptions are, are not open at all times. We open it three times a year. And the next one's just about to open on the 15th of March. Our subscription reopens just for two weeks and then we close it again so we can manage numbers. But I have been doing that designing. So I've been knitting lots of the same sock in different colors um, and at the moment, I just wanted to see how cute is that little bag? So this little bag is created by one of our customers who comes into our Stitchers Meetup. And uh, Amy is Wild and Field Fibres. Again, I'll put it down here and check out, uh, go and follow Amy on Instagram because she makes these bags, she makes them in different sizes, but this is a perfect little sock bag. Um, and I am knitting I'm not going to reveal the design because I've only just started this version of it. So I have just cast on and started knitting these. It's in Amble Yarn by Fibre Company again. It is one of my favourite sock yarns. It is so plump, so warm. Back to the socks I've got on at the moment are knitted in Amble. It's a beautiful, super soft yarn and it's just a pleasure to knit with. So people who have our beginners, oh, beginners intro box do get... Um, to get their uh, a, a skein of amble in it to knit their socks might not be this color it might be a different color but um, we do have we do have sort of different different colors that go out which we think think every single one of them is lovely so that's that's what else i've been up to what else was i going to talk about um oh oh yeah uh, we i just wanted to show you some new yarns we actually got it just from a because they're from a cornish cornish supplier a cornish dyer um and debbie and george are from um penzance which is not far away from us here probably about sort of a 40 minute drive away and they own yarny octopus which is a small independent uh dyer here in cornwall and they dye on some beautiful bases and when we connected we connected just before Christmas and they popped into the shop and we had a lovely chat about sort of their, their yarns and things and what they could what they could dye for us. And um, they are going to be dyeing one of our future sock club um, edits. So watch out for that later in the year, as is Hannah at um, Camel's Yarn, um, who's going to be dyeing us one, which is their May box. And our July box is being dyed up by Lay Family Yarns and they're all exclusive those ones, you won't get them anywhere else, those colourways. But Yarny Octopus have dyed up these yarns, which are Cornish themed. Um, so they are, are they are merino and nylon, but to me, they feel totally different to the normal merino and nylon bases that we get. So they are so much plumper. They almost feel like, well, they almost feel like a BFL almost. Um, this colour here is called Shipwreck which um, it's just to sort of show the depths and then this is the waves breaking over the ship and these rusty elements are obviously bits of the bark of, of ships and we have a lot of shipwrecks here around uh, the coast in Cornwall. This is called Newlin Harbour Blue, which is this beautiful colour which reflects the sea. I love that colour. That might be a pair of socks for me. And then this one, it's called Meansome. 
sock. Anybody that's ever been to Cornwall, or is Cornish, will have heard me answer. It's a Cornish colloquial term that we use. All right, me answer. Uh, you don't hear my Cornish come out very often, but that is that is one of the ways that we say it. Um, so this this one again sort of really reflects the coastline around Cornwall. So I just loved these yarns, and it's so nice to be working with a with another sort of local dyer. We do, as a business, always try and support local. Um, today is International Women's Day, and a lot of the businesses we support are run by women. Um, and we think that's a really important sort of way of working, that we support each other as women and that we uh, support those small businesses that don't have the massive resources that those big brands have that, you know, yeah, you can drive down prices, but actually what's behind those low prices um, and, you know, horses for courses, there are yarns for everybody, but for our brand, what we try and do is support British as much as we can, but not always British. But as much as we can, we like to support British, but always small businesses. And I think 95% of the time run by women too. So these are two other colors that the Yarny Octopus have dyed up. Um, this is Yak Sock, so a super soft sock. And it is Stormy Harbor Red. And that one is Stormy Harbour Blue Teal, so lovely colours. When these are actually caked, they are stunning. And I will knit up some samples and have them in the shop. Um, be able to. They also dyed us up these lovely kits. Now this um, this is for the Fuss Free Festival shawl. Uh, very simple garter stitch shawl, but we're going to do it as a fade. So it's a, it's a sort of a crescent shaped shawl. And this yarn here is a... Um, what is it? Naturally dyed brushed baby alpaca. So it's 100% alpaca, four ply weight. And these are 50 grams, so you get 200 meters. Um, but just look at those blues. How stunning are they um, together? So that's going to make a beautiful, soft and fluffy shawl. And I've got to knit, the, <laughs> knit a sample up. But this is the colour I'm going to knit up, which is so gorgeous. This lovely apricot. Peach fuzz, apparently, is the Pantone colour of the year. Who knew? Uh, I just think this is a really flattering colour for most people as well. So uh, we have a very limited stock of these kits in the shop. And again, they will be online in the next few days. Um, but they come in a lovely little bag and you get the pattern. So Yarny Octopus bag. So yeah, we were delighted to be working with them. And as I said, sort of really chimes with how we like to operate as a business because we feel it's important to solidarity, you know, stick together. The big guys are monopoly, you know, have the monopoly usually and can drive down costs and be really sharp. But we like to pay a fair price for the yarn that we have um, from people so that that we all get a good sort of deal out of it and the customer gets a good deal out of it as well. Uh, I think I'm nearly there. One of the other things I wanted to at the retreat, somebody we were talking books. We weren't just talking knitting, so we talked about everything, actually, everything under the sun. Uh, but one of the, the ladies there was a, was a teacher, a retired teacher, and a great, an avid reader and sort of likes different books. And she recommended this book and it's called In the Footsteps of Sheep, Tales of a Journey Through Scotland, Walking, Spinning and Knitting Socks by Debbie Zawinski. Um, so I ordered a copy, it's just arrived. Um, I am really looking forward to having a read of that. But I'd be interested to know, is anybody else sort of getting any really good book recommendations? Because I, I love a read. Um, doesn't have to be Yarny based. Um, I love reading. But anything that's really interesting like this, that's sort of relevant to, to fibre and yarn or crafting, um, I'd be just really interested in your recommendations. So finally, um, at the end of this video, last Mother's Day, so going back a year, my children bought me a voucher for a spa day um, down at Mullion, which is down near the Lizard, down on the south coast, a little bit further down than, than I am here in Falmouth. Um, they bought me a spa day. It's one of those vouchers you're really grateful and then you think, oh, you know, I must do that, I must book that. And then 
time was going on, I thought, goodness me, I need to check the expiry date of this. And the expiry date was the 10th of March. So I was like, I need to get this booked. Um, and uh, yeah, I, 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 it was just really difficult to find time in my diary. And I was just like putting it off and putting it off. And I was like, no, I need to make, you know, they took the time to do this. I need to to go and, and, and do it. So I went to Mullion uh, for the day last Friday. It was again a super windy day. Goodness me, the wind was so bad up there that I could hardly stand upright. Uh, but I did film my little spa treat, um, and uh, so I've added that little video which you're going to get coming up just now. It's a short little video, but it, the scenery is spectacular. Um, but I must say as well that I hadn't realised how much I needed it. So just just actually taking that time out for me. I had the spa to myself for the first hour and a half, which was amazing. Um, so it was really sort of quiet and I could just luxuriate in the sauna, the steam room, the spa and the bubbles. Um, and I did take my knitting with me. Um, I did take, yeah, I did take my little bag with me actually with another sock in it. And then after about an hour and a half, some other ladies came in, they were all sisters and we were chatting away and one of them got out a crossword. And so um, they invited me to join in with the crossword completing, which, which was great fun. Um, and then I had a massage and a facial, which was amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, it was really lovely just to take the time out and treat myself. And then it was followed by two course lunch, which was beautiful too. So. I think my lesson to myself was you do need to take these moments out and, and I say this to anybody, you know, we deserve to be pampered, us us women um, and, and guys, any of us who um, who sort of are in this space, we all deserve to be pampered and it was just so nice to take that time out for me and uh yeah just reset really it was yeah it was a really nice interlude so i thought i'd take you down with me so you're going to join me in a minute in mullion and uh i just want to say thank you so much for listening um please do comment as always and please subscribe and like share it with other people so that other people get to to join us and um i look forward to talking to you next time and just just to say again <laughs> noted i will make sure that if we do another we, we, we will do another pattern review when we do the next one we will do it slightly differently so you get to see what we're talking about as we're talking about it anyway goodbye everybody and speak to you soon i thought i'd take you on a little trip to a spa day that I was treated to for last Mother's Day a very windy old mullion. Look how windy it is. Um, the, the scenery was breathtaking and I decided to walk out onto the headland a little bit to see if I could get a better shot. It was so, so windy. I was really scared that I'd get blown over. I was struggling to stay upright um, as, as the wind was blowing. Um, but if you look into the harbour, down into the harbour at where it was um, at Mullion, you can see how bad it was. And this is the hotel, Missing Inn, on the side, but a lovely hotel. And this was my spa treat, um, as I said, for my children. So I was going to go in and I'm bringing you with me. So just a final look at that view from just outside the hotel before I go in. And yeah, that sea, I wouldn't like to be in that sea today. It was so, so strong. So walking out, having a little view. Um, so this is the view from the hotel. Great view, great placement. If you're in Cornwall, well, well worth a visit. And now I'm inside and thankfully inside. So the wind has dropped a bit. A lovely little space inside of foyer. And I'm just going to go and check in. So on my way down to the spa, which is in a separate building. Uh, so a lovely little wooden cabin with a lovely terrace. It'd be lovely in the summer sitting out here um, with that view. And they've got an outdoor swimming pool. And they did tell me inside that it was seven degrees, the water temperature. So pretty damn freezing. And I wasn't going in there today. <laughs> inside, peace, calm, herbal teas, hot water, loads of towels.
So inside I've got a private spa by the looks of it today. I don't think anybody's venturing out in this weather. Excuse the wet floor. This is a trepidarium, like a heated, heated bed. The ice for the ice bucket um, or to rub yourself with ice. Not for me today, not with this weather. Which is pretty warm. And steam room, as you can see. And then this is rather lovely, having this to myself. This is lovely and warm. And when you press one of those buttons there, you get all the bubbles. And uh, yeah, it was rather nice to do that. <laughs> no, not a cold dunk of ice and iced water over my head. It does not fill me with joy. So, being a knitty girl, I put my knitting along, a book, got some fruit tea, I'm going to sit and enjoy that view. Had to show you lunch too, it was gorgeous, and then finally back to that fabulous view.